A white supremacist was found guilty of shooting five Black Lives Matter protesters back in November 2015 at the Jamar Clark protest in Minnesota. Let's go roll the clip. Yeah, the trial itself took about two weeks, but today it only took a matter of hours for the jury to reach that verdict. Again, guilty across all 12 counts, including assault with, during a riot and assault with a weapon. Now, we also spoke with one of those five victims. He was here for the verdict, and he let out a, a quiet yes, apparently, when, when that verdict came down for the first count. And then he spoke to us and the rest of the media talking about what he thought was key in this case in terms of getting the guilty verdict. He said it was the video of Scarcella on his way to the protest. It was the text messages talking about what he would do with this gun. But even still, the jury was out, so to speak. He wasn't sure he would get this guilty verdict. And I, I had the butterfly because I was kind of really thinking that they were going to be on his side and was going to let him go because he was claiming self-defense. Mm -hmm. And I know that you, you got to listen to some of the testimony. Did you feel like it wasn't going well at some point? Oh, yes, I did. I did feel that way. But then again, things came out the way that I wanted to come out, and I'm blessed and I'm happy that the four or the five of us got justice. But the fight is still not over with. Cameron Clark right there says he's also a cousin of Jamar. He says the first person he wanted to call after the verdict was uh, released was his mother to let her know that he got what he was hoping for. Again, he said he was shot in the leg not too far from his artery, so he says he's simply just lucky to be alive, but he says the fight is not over. He wants to press charges against everybody involved in this case. As for Scarcella, his next hearing is scheduled for mid-March. Now, the reason why this white supremacist had got convicted they had video on him and in his video, he stated that he had a gun designed to kill black people. He wrote text messages that was racist in nature. He went to that protest to agitate and to start stuff with black people so he can shoot them because they were minding their own business. He went over there calling them all kind of racial slurs. And when they wanted to say something to him about what happened, he started to fire upon them. That's what he chose to do, but they already had him dead to rights. And that's why he's getting locked up in jail. Now he's supposed to get sentenced March the 10th and he's facing 19 years in jail. The other guys that were with him, they're facing charges as well. So when these white supremacists come out there, they so dumb. They sit up there and say all this mess all over social media, text messages, phone calls and everything. And like, they're not going to use that against you in court. Now I want to know why he wasn't charged with a hate crime because that should have been some sort of hate crime charge since you had him dead to rights on him saying that he had a gun specially made to kill black people. That's he said he was on a mission and that's why he shot those black people. You see, these white supremacists, they cowards because he was covering his face. They want to do things at night all the time. And, you know, that's just their nature. And that's just what they do. They, they cowards. They don't work for anything. They steal everything they, they got. There's nobody to respect or honor at all. Like I keep saying, they are cancer and a virus to this nation, uh, the white supremacists. That's why they are the most uh, dangerous group running around and even the FBI knows this, but usually they're not going to do nothing about it because, Hey, you got to protect the good old boy system, right? Uh, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think about this. Share the video, like the commentary, subscribe for more news stories.